During the 50s, geophysicists conducted extensive ocean bottom profiling. If the oceans were permanent features, the sediment accumulated from continental erosion over four billion years should be about four miles thick. The echo sounding profiles beyond the continental slopes reflected an average thickness of only several hundred feet. There was yet another surprise. Expecting to dredge up ancient Precambrian rocks, the drill cores consistently sampled rock less than 200 million years old. The ocean basins were youthful, less than 1 20th the age of the continents. Proceeding to map the ocean floors, scientists discovered a mid-oceanic ridge system that traced its way for 40,000 miles through the oceans of the world. This ridge system is associated with volcanic and quake activity. During this same period of research, scientists were engaged in paleomagnetic surveys, magnetic mapping of the Earth's surface. The magnetic data presented scientists with puzzling irregularities or anomalies. In this strip pattern in the North Pacific, the dark area represents rock magnetized in the present direction of the North Pole. In the light areas, the rock is reversely magnetized. That is, the North Pole is located where the South Pole presently is. The results of all this research instilled a mood of unease and tension in the Earth sciences. By the end of the 50s, the rigid Earth advocates were playing a wait and see game. Yet any geologist who was willing to revive Wegener's view did so at the peril of his reputation or at the risk of dismissal from his faculty. The 60s commenced as a decade of synthesis. A series of bold, brilliant papers are presented by geologists who had seen, in a flash of insight, connections between all the unrelated data collected in the 50s. Boos were heard at conferences when they presented their papers. The late Harry Hess of Princeton makes the first notable association between two sets of discoveries, the mid-oceanic ridge system and its volcanic activity. It occurs to him why the ocean basins are so young. They are constantly renewing themselves. Rising from the hot limbs of the mantle, lava is deposited at the surface. And spreading laterally, the seafloor then acts like a conveyor belt. Yes, the concept was first... Frederick Vine explains his discovery. A connection between those magnetic reversals and Hess's conveyor belt which determines the speed of seafloor spreading. Oceanic crust, the seafloor is continuously being created at mid-ocean ridge crests, such as the crest of the mid-Atlantic ridge here in the South Atlantic. It is generated above an upwelling in the mantle and spreads laterally away from the crests, thereby separating, drifting the continents apart as though they were on a conveyor belt of upper mantle material. So one might represent this, therefore, by uh, a simple model such as this, illustrating the way in which the conveyor belt of oceanic crust and upper mantle material flows out from this central crack in the Earth's crust. Well, now, in 1963, uh, Drum Matthews and myself, then at Cambridge, uh, added the simple rider to this and, in effect, converted his conveyor belt of uh, oceanic crust into a tape recorder. We suggested that as new crust is formed, solidifies, uh, at a ridge crest, frozen into it will be the current direction of the Earth's magnetic field. This will be subsequently moved aside as newer material comes in. And in this way, successive avenues of crust, normally and reversely magnetized, will be built up, paralleling the ridge crest and symmetrically disposed about it. And indeed, going back to the anomaly map, the very detailed contour map of Raff and Raff and Mason for this area of the Northeast Pacific. And after peering at it for some time, we could see that indeed there is a remarkable symmetry of the magnetic anomalies about the crest of this so-called Juan de Fuca ridge in this area. And they do indeed reproduce all the details of the reversal time scale in remarkable detail. So to summarize this then, we drew up this new colored summary map, which emphasizes this symmetry about 
the ridge crests in a truly remarkable way. It's incredible to think that it had been within the literature for four or five years. In 63, it was very frustrating because I had this idea and, and one realized that if it was true, you know, the implications were, were enormous, that the ocean basins were young, ephemeral features, that all the oceanic crust, all the deep ocean basins that we see today uh, were generated, say, within the past 200 million years of geologic time, less than 5% of the whole of geologic time. But what of the earthquake activity associated with the ridge system? Tuzo Wilson provides the answer to the last part of the puzzle. I remember being told as a student that the St. Andreas Fault had earthquakes along it, and they continued out to sea for some distance, and then stopped abruptly. So there was a problem as to how a fault with large movement, which the Californians had suggested amounted over the many years to many miles of movement in this sort of fashion, could have motion like that which would stop suddenly somewhere out in the Pacific Ocean. And the idea occurred that perhaps something was going on as you can see in this piece of paper. And you see the spreading is taking place along here where the material comes up to the surface. And as the material comes up, it allows sliding to take place along this line here. So spreading here, sliding here. So the Pacific plate is bounded by the East Pacific rise, which is spreading, by sliding along the St. Andreas Fault, by another little bit of spreading off the coast of British Columbia and the state of Washington, by sliding off British Columbia, and then by subduction zones where the Pacific floor goes down under Alaska and Japan. And North America is part of another plate. So this was the origin of the idea of the transformed fault. And the continents are not being carried around as ships that are driving themselves, but are drifting around on the surface of these huge plates as rafts. And the Earth's surface is divided by these active zones where earthquakes and volcanoes occur into a number of separate rigid plates. A little more mopping up with the aid of a computer, and the ancient annals of drift are recreated. Scientist Warren Carey, who first proposed using the edge of the continental shelves, to make the fit more accurate, testified, I have even returned to Wagner's Pangaea. And so had they all by the end of the 60s. But a lot of people aren't happy about it because they weren't brought up with it. It's like asking a middle-aged man to change his religion and they don't really like it. They would be delighted to see something uh, happen that would destroy it all and go back to fixed continents. <laughs> 